Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining our NVENT RayChem webinar. My name is Raya Cranston, the Technical Support Manager for NVENT Thermal. NVENT Thermal is the leader of electric heat tracing solutions with well-known brands such as RayChem, New Heat, Pyrotenics, and Tracer. Today I'll be presenting uh, how to design a heat tracing system for roof and gutter using our roof and gutter calculator. But before we can get started, we have to understand how icicles and ice dams are formed. And then how do we prevent these ice dams? And then Raycam solutions for roof and gutter de-icing systems. And then we'll walk through what parameters are actually needed before we can get using our roof and gutter calculator. So first off, when we look at winter, it can pose some interesting challenges. Extreme and unexpected cold temperatures can pose some significant safety risks to both people and property. When we look at ice dams and icicle formation, it's actually the accumulation of snow on your roof that melts and thaws throughout the winter that creates small icicles. These small icicles can actually start to build and build, and as they start to get larger, that melt water starts to actually back up in and under your roof surface until at some point it actually can penetrate in and under your roof surface and into inside your building. When we look at a Raycam self-regulating heating cable system, we are here to provide a continuous path for that melt water to flow. Melt water is going to run off the roof into the associated gutters, down the downspouts, and then have a place where it can safely refreeze. We can see when we introduce a heat tracing system, either a Raychem self-regulating heating cable or one of our RIM systems, the icicle formation and dam formation is significantly reduced, and the risk of falling icicles and proper da damage is significantly minimized. Raychem has a full variety of solutions depending on building type or project size, environment, as well as aesthetic requirements using self-regulating heating cable options or our RIM concealed roof de-icing system. In our self-regulating heating cable selection, we have both our Ice Stop, Winter Guard Wet, and Frost Guard products. When we look at Frost Guard and Winter Guard Wet, these products are predominantly used in residential or small building applications. They are available in a 120 volt or 208 to 240 volt range of heating cable. Our frost guard is a pre-terminated or pre-assembled plug-in unit available in specific lengths up to and including 100 foot. Winter guard wet is a cut to length option is available in any size um, up to a maximum of 250 feet on 240 volts. Winter Guard Wet is available with our standard two-year warranty, um, which will protect you from any manufacturer's defect. When we look at Ice Stop, Ice Stop is our uh, cable, self-regulating cable used for larger commercial buildings. However, it can be used for small applications as well using a 120 volt. Larger applications tend to want to use 208 to 277 volts. Ice Stop is also available with two jacketing types, which is our fluoropolymer and our polyolefin outer jacket. Polyolefin is standard uh, water grade jacketing, where our fluoropolymer jacketed is a upgraded jacket, which is great for areas that are on the coast, which will have high salt content in the air, or uh, ones that are areas that will have high uh, chlorides in the air, or even just ones that need a slightly lug more rugged jacket for larger pulls. Hazardous locations are also available in, for on our industrial locations with Ice Stop. When we pair Ice Stop with our advanced control systems, uh, then we get a much more energy efficient system as well. Ice Stop is available with our standard two year warranty, as well as if you register online, it is available with a 10-year extended warranty. RIM, which is our concealed roof de-icing system, uses the same self-regulating cable technology, but combines it with a specially grooved mounting plate that fits the heating cable perfectly. The cover plate then covers both the mounting plate and the heating cable to protect the heating cable and disperse the heat through the material uh, metal surfaces, which leads to an exceptional 
energy efficient system while providing a beautifully aesthetically pleasing cover to match any roof and style. As you can see, RIM is available in 32 colors. So color's not uh, at all an issue to match with your roof style. RIM system is available with standard two-year warranty, as well as when you register your system online, it's available with an extended 20-year warranty. Our roof and gutter calculator can design both the cable solution only and a RIM system. When you design a cable only solution, the roof and gutter calculator will calculate not only the amount of heating cable needed, but will suggest the necessary components and termination kits in order to complete the system. The calculator will provide the number of breakers and size of breakers your customer will need, but they will need to provide these separately as they will not be included on your bill of material. When we look at a RIM system, the roof and gutter calculator will select a type of e-panel based on the roof style and uh, slope of the roof and will provide a matching valley panel where needed. The cable cover uh, to complete the system will actually cover all these um, reef systems and valleys, so then there's a seamless uh, metal plate covering the entire heating cable system. The amount of heating cable needed, as well as the connection kits and accessories provided, uh, will be provided to you on a full bill of material. Once again, the calculator will provide the size and number of breakers, but the customer will need to sp set, uh, supply these separately. In order to consider all the needed items during the design stage, Raychem has a roof and gutter form available on www.nventhermal.com. This will help you gather all the necessary information from your customer. Things like the type of roof, you know, is it a shingled roof or a metal roof? How large of, uh, how much distance is between your metal seams? Or how high, um, how large of an overhang do you actually have on that roof? Are you looking to heat trace your gutters? And if so, how wide, how deep, and how long is that gutter? And same with downspouts, how high are those downspouts? How, how wide are they so that we know if we need a single or double trace of heating cable? Valleys are definitely needing to be concerned because that's where a lot of the meltwater wants to flow into. What voltages does your customer have available? Do they only have 120 or do they have a 208 to 240 or even a 277 available for larger systems? And do they have any breaker size limitations? Maybe that panel doesn't have as much room needed to complete the entire system and we need to know that upfront. Does your customer have a specific requirement? Do they want just a cable system or are they looking for a rim system? And the last thing you want to make sure you can consult with your customer is what type of control are they looking for? Are they looking for just ambient control, sensing the air temperature, or are they looking for a moisture temperature uh, controller that will energize the heating cable throughout the winter? Once you have this information, you're ready to use the Raychem roof and gutter calculator to get your full bill of materials. With all the needed information, from your customer, we're ready to use the online calculator. And this can be found on www.nventhermal.com. So let's go there now, and I'll show you where to go. Once your page loads, you will be presented with our industrial, commercial, and residential tabs. Our Raychem roof and gutter de-icing calculator is found under our commercial tab. So let's click there. Under our resources tab is, found, is where you'd find all of our online calculators. This includes not only the roof and gutter calculator, but we'll be joining later on in regards to our TraceCalc Pro for buildings and our SnowCalc. So we'll be dealing with those calculators at another session. Today, we're gonna to be using our roof and gutter de-icing calculator. So let's click into there. The roof and gutter calculator, uh, again, we're providing a path for meltwater to flow. You can feel free to use the video once again, but I'm just gonna get started for today. So once we hit our start button, it is gonna ask us to log in using a username and password. If you do not have a username and password already for our Nvent Thermal website, you can feel free to use the register button to create a username and password. If you've already been through that process, then the same username and password is used for all of our online calculators. So only one is needed. 
So I'm going to go ahead and start my project. As you can see, I have a full list of projects of, that I've already previously done. As you get your project list, you can edit previous projects, you can view a quick result of that project, or you can delete as needed just to keep them nice and clean. To create a new project, it's that easy. Just create a new project. Your project name will come with a standard project name, and we want to make sure that as you build out your project list, make sure you use either an address or something that is meaningful to you in regards to this project name. That way, finding them in your project list will be that much easier in the future. When we look at our input parameters that we got from our, our customer, remember we need to either design a heating cable system or a rim system. Today, we're going to first consider a heating cable system, and then we're going to work on a rim system just so we can compare. When we look at market with our heating cable system, you'll notice that we are presented with residential or commercial. If you remember from our earlier slides, residential is our WinterGuard products. And WinterGuard is available in only a polyolefin outer jacket and a 120 to 208 to 240 volt heating cable. However, when we switch this over to a commercial, we are presented with a polyolefin and fluoropolymer jacket and we're presented now with an additional voltage up to a 277 volt. For today, I'm going to consider it just a, a standard polyolefin with 208 volt application. We are going to skip over this material override for now, as that is really fine tuning your application and your design later on. So I'm going to let this override just slide right now, and we'll revisit that when we get a result. When we scroll down, we actually get a list of areas. We're only on area one for now. So what I'm going to do is define what this area is. I'm going to pretend that I have a small commercial building, and we're going to consider a front entrance, and we're going to consider a side entrance. So first, I'm going to consider our front entrance. When I change my area name, you'll notice the tab up in the areas does change. As we add areas, you're going to have multiple tabs that you can progress through a larger project as you go. When we look at the startup temperature, uh, anywhere that has a significant amount of uh, snow accumulation or can see uh, dipping temperatures, I would definitely suggest changing this to a startup temperature of zero to allow for your worst case startup temperature. If you're in a sub more southern climate and don't see very uh, negative te temperatures or not a very significant snowfall, then you can feel free to leave that at 20 or even 32 on the very rare instance. As you can see, we have a force breaker size. I'm going to leave that blank for now and see what the system gives me in regards to breaker size. If the customer only had, say, 15 or 20 amp breakers in their panel, this is where you would actually drop down and dictate how many breakers or what size of breaker you need at this time. But since this is my first time through, I'm going to let that default. When we move over to roof, roof type is where we'd actually dictate, uh, denote whether we are dealing with a metal or a shingled roof. Remember, metal roof goes up and down every other seam. So uh, that is a significantly different amount of cable than when we're dealing with a shingled roof. Shingle roof wants to go in a zigzag pattern similar to what you see on all of our documentation with that V or zigzag pattern. So when we deal with a shingled roof, we're looking at probably the worst case amount of heating cable. So I'm going to stay as a shingled roof today. Is the roof traced? And to be quite honest, I always say yes, because if you're looking for a roof and gutter system, you are looking to um, introduce heat tracing on the roof itself. In our example, our front entrance is approximately 20 feet long with an overhang distance of 24 inches long. This overhang distance will actually tell me how high that zigzag needs to go up into the roof space. We want to make sure that we go 12 inches into the heated area onto your roof. So a 24 inch overhang distance is allowing for a larger zigzag than say a 12 inch overhang. And of course, we're going the full 20 foot across the roof. 
the gutter in this case, I'm going to assume, is the same length as my front entrance, that it runs the full length of the roof edge. If you had a roof where uh, you had a small portion that extends beyond the roof edge, this is where you could massage your results or your massage your design to have a shorter or longer gutter length than your roof edge. A standard gutter width is typically six inches, as well as a typical gutter depth is typically six inches. The gutter width, when we consider uh, anything greater than six inches, we're actually looking at a looped heating cable within that gutter system, which means a double run of heating cable. Six inches or lower, you're actually looking at a single trace of heating cable within that gutter. When we consider gutter depth, we want to consider the amount of heating cable that needs to go in and out of that uh, gutter and making sure we leave enough heating cables so then we're not getting too tight and, our z and potentially shortening up our zigzag pattern. When we look at the downspouts, we want to take the average length of the downspouts in this area. With my, <laughs> with my pretend installation, I am going to stay with two downspouts, one at either end, and because this is a commercial building, I'm going to assume that this is also 20 feet high off the ground. You have the choice of whether you want to loop the downspout, loop the heating cable into the downspout, or when you say no to a loop, you're actually going to drive the system to include a T at the top of that downspout. This is good for long downspouts that uh, will add a tremendous amount of heating cable to your overall project or smaller downspouts that maybe only require one trace of heating cable. Typically, anything 20 foot or lower or downspouts that are four inches or greater, you'll want to make sure that you loop that heating cable. Since I'm only doing a front entrance in my example, I don't actually have any valleys to consider, so I'm just going to zero that out. Remember, valleys, you want to consider the full length of the valley when you dictate it in the roof and gutter calculator, as the roof and, cal roof and gutter calculator will automatically take the two-third length that is dictated in our design and installation manual. So if we did a 20-foot length, uh, you're not going to get that much heating cable because you're going to get two-thirds of that, which is approximately 13 feet high of a heat ca heating cable within that valley. Again, we can do a material override if you want to add additional T's, power connection, or additional heating cable if needed. As we continue to scroll down, you're going to see an easy and quick result summary. This is actually a dynamic result. So as we were changing all of our parameters up top, these were automatically changing. We just didn't see it because it was further down. So as you can see, our zigzag pattern across our front entrance is going to need 85 linear feet of heating cable in and out of the uh, gutters and downsides. That's your six inches in and out every time you do a zigzag. And then one length of heating cable, the full length of the gutter. We had two downspouts at 20 foot each with a loop of cable, which means 40 foot of heating cable per downspout. We did not have any uh, valleys. And of course, we leave a little bit of heating cable for connection kits. And because we had extra heating cable, 10% allowance, it is actually calculating that for us as well. You will notice that the system has automatically defaulted to a circuit breaker size of a 30 amp circuit breaker. And we needed one of them because the max circuit, break, uh, circuit length on the circuit breaker is 290 foot, and our calculation has come to 218 foot. We can still fit this on one heating cable circuit, and therefore one power connection kit, one controller, and one sensor of each type has been added to the bill of material. The necessary components, such as downspout hangers and roof clips and zip ties, have also been included into your bill of materials. This is just for the front entrance. So as we scroll down, we get a full summary of heating cable for the entire project, as well as the full bill of material for the full project. This is obviously very similar to our one circuit, so let's add to our project, and we'll see how that quickly changes. As we do a new area, the new area is called area two, but I want to do a side 
entrance. The side entrance is still going to be a shingled area, and I still want to consider the roof edge. However, this is going to be a significantly shorter edge, and it's not going to come out away from the building nearly as much. When we look at our side entrance, uh, it is going to have a, the same roof and gutter or the same shingle roof as our main entrance. However, this is a shortened little roof. So therefore, I'm going to consider an 8-foot length and a short little overhang distance of only 12 inches. What that will do is actually change up the zigzag height and width and actually shorten up the amount of heating cable that is needed on the roof length. I still want to consider my gutter that is directly underneath the roof length, and I want to include my gutter width, which is six inches, as, and the same with our gutter depth of six inches as well, similar to our front entrance. Since this is only a small little side entrance, I only have one downspout. However, this would be a full 30 foot as is over a loading dock, or so I think. When I look at the valley, again, I don't have a lot of, um, this is a straight little side entrance, so I, once again, don't have any valleys. Now when I look down at my results, I can actually see the difference between my front entrance and side entrance and the amount of heating cable needed for each location. When I scroll down, I will need a single breaker for my front entrance as well as a breaker for my side entrance. However, this breaker can be sized at a 15 amp breaker rather than a 30, since the amount of cable needed for our side entrance is significantly less. When I scroll down, our project result actually shows how much heating cable is needed for each portion of the roof. And when we look at the total, that's where it gets carried over to our total project build material, as well as two ray clicks, which means two power connection kits, two controllers, and the necessary components. When I scroll back up to the top, there's much that we actually forgot to address, which is one, we can save our changes and view our results. So let's go ahead and hit that now. I'm going to save my changes, and the results field will actually pop up. Now that we have two areas defined, it actually makes a lot more sense, because now we have our full bill of material for our entire project, as well as a breakout for each location. So here's our front entrance, how much heating cable is needed for each location on that front entrance, and then the total bill of material needed for the front entrance, including what size of breaker and number of breakers needed that the customer will need to provide separate from this bill of material. As we scroll down, we get the same detail available for our side entrance. The side entrance, how much heating cable is needed for the side entrance, um, both for the downspouts, the uh, gutter, and the roof line, with the total amount of heating cable and bill of material for the front or for the side entrance as well. This is the report that you would actually download and hand to your customer and or to your area representative to be able to um, price out your bill of material uh, for bidding processes. I'm going to X out of this report, but know that this can be downloaded or saved in a PDF format. One other thing that we didn't mention is the material override. The material override can suggest different controllers. This is really getting a little bit more advanced within our controls are within our software. Within our software, you can tell that we did suggest a controller for each location. However, if your customer needed a specific controller that they wanted to use, you can override this by using the drop-down box and the listed controllers, as well as our power connection kits, tees, and splices are all our ray-click power connection kits. When we use the heat shrink checkbox here, this actually changes your bill of material immediately down below. So as we scroll down and find our bill of material, we have a controller override that we just dictated, and it's changed out our rate click PCs to the FTC-P power connection kit and end seal. You'll notice I did not check the T-splice. 
uh, because really we have a looped system in all of our downspouts. Therefore, I actually don't have any T's in this particular system either. As I scroll back up to the top, we can save our changes and view our results. Or if we save our changes and request a quote, the request a quote field will uh, send your bill of material to our technical support agents who will then forward and review your application and forward it to your area um, representative. Your area representative can take your bill of materials, suggest a distributor of which you can purchase from, or provide you list pricing. Today I'm going to save our changes. So right now we've considered a cable-only solution using our ice stop cable. If we needed to take the same bill of material or the same project and offer our customer a rim comparison, this is very easily done, as we would just simply change our heating cable to rim. We'll keep our same voltage as we're doing a straight comparison for our customer. You will very quickly see that over in this right-hand side, several options did come up specific to a RIM system. When we talk about RIM, RIM, we do need to know whether we're dealing with new construction or retrofit. This will dictate the, the um, style of eave panel that is needed for your application. No need to cut your roof when we don't have to, not when it's a new construction. However, when it is a retrofit, there may be some modifications to the roof in order to be able to slide the rim system in and under your existing roof. Your annual snowfall is actually uh, looking at the amount of heating cable and watt density that is needed for your rim system. Areas that have more than 100 inches of snow per year or high elevations should make sure they select the more than 100 inches per year, as that will increase the watt density and the amount of heating cable and the efficiency of the system to be able to melt the amount of snow that you get in your region. As previously mentioned, RIM is available in a wide variety of colors. You can select a copper uh, cover plate as well as a full selection of colors. The ones with the little T beside them, those are actually our um, most popular colors and are aesthetically pleasing with most shingle colors and vinyl siding. Slate is my favorite color. When we make those quick adjustments, you'll notice that um, if we were to scroll down, our bill of material is changing automatically with every change that we make up top. So, when we look at our areas, each area is exactly the same way that we've designed, defined previously. The only change is rim, you actually do need to know the pitch of the roof. This will dictate whether you go with a standard eave panel or if you have a low sloped roof, then it will go with a low pitched eave panel. Hence, this is why you need to know the pitch of your roof. I'm going to do the same thing on my side entrance, only on my side entrance, I'm going to say this is a low pitched roof. So you can see the comparison. So my front entrance is a high pitched roof, my side entrance is a low pitched roof. When I look at the amount of heating cable needed for a rim system, rim is not allowing the heating cable to zigzag across the roof surface, but rather it is running laterally with the roof edge which means significantly less heating cable is actually needed for a rim system. As a result, your size of breaker and number of breakers actually just also decrease substantially. As previously mentioned, our roof and gutter calculator will, will size the si our select the appropriate eave panel, valley panel, cable cover, and all the necessary brackets needed for your system as well as suggest a controller and all the necessary accessories. When we scroll down, we still get our full project bill of material, as well as a breakout of how much heating cable is needed for each location. As we can see, we have a eave panel needed for each location. Once again, we can go back up, download, view our results 
save our results, or request a quote as needed. That concludes our roof and gutter calculator session for today. If you have any questions in regards to the roof and gutter calculator, where to buy, or need to find an area representative closest to you, you can find a list of area represent, re representatives at www.nventhermal.com through support and where to buy, and that will give you a full list of area representatives as well as a list of distributors. Thank you for joining us today, and please watch out for our future presentations regarding our Raychem pipe freeze protection software called TraceCalc Pro for buildings, as well as our surface snow melting software called SnowCalc.